Welcome back to the Knife Studio. Here it is. My name is Kyle Royer and I'm a master bladesmith. It looks really cool when you wire wheel it. Making my first ever sword. So let's embark on this epic edged adventure. Update on the sword. What I've got done so far today is I had to mess around with uh, fuller stuff for a long time, trying to figure out exactly what I was gonna do with the fuller. And I also profiled the sides of the sword and got them nice and straight, the sides right here. That took me a little while. And the next thing I'm getting ready to do is profile the tip. So it's straight from down here all the way up to like here or so. And then from here, I want it to taper all the way to a nice sharp point. So I still have to do that. And I'm gonna show you guys some tips and tricks on getting that nice and symmetrical. I also spent a lot of time today trying to figure out the fuller. I had to go to town and try to get a bearing for my small wheel attachment, like a smaller bearing. Couldn't find one and stuff. So I actually found a way to make what I had work by wrapping a couple Couple layers of tape around my small wheel just to make it a little bit bigger so I could grind this fuller in and the bearing wouldn't hit in the way. Yeah, so here's a rough fuller I ground in and then I did some modifications, put some tape on my wheel and stuff and then I ground this one in. Ground it with a tiny, tiny bit of taper and then I also ground in some edge bevels just to kind of simulate the blade getting ground in because I wanted to see what the taper would be like. The fuller though will be about 23 inches long or so on the actual sword but I just wanted to see what the taper would look like. I wanted it nice and wide at the base and then I wanted to taper down to about a quarter inch wide or so down at the end of the fuller and I absolutely love the way this looks. I was able to grind it all on the grinder and went to like a 320 grit belt and then even a, a cork belt with some uh, buffing compounds so it should only take a little bit of hand sanding actually to get this fuller finished out and I think that's going to work really good. I'm going to start shaping the tip on this and then I'll show you guys a cool little tip I use to check symmetry on the tips of daggers and swords now since this is my first sword. Something else I did today is took this cracking wheel off and put it on my lathe and domed it a little bit. It was getting really flat. In fact, it was actually dished out in the center a little bit. And uh, in order for a tracking wheel to really work well, it needs to have a tiny bit of a dome. So took it off there, chucked it up in the lathe, put a little dome on it so the belt will track better now. tip profiled about as close as I can get it with the eyeball and the center lines looking at it. I used both of my eyeballs actually. So now the trick to getting a nice symmetrical tip is take this piece of paper, put the sword on it, hold it down and mark around the sword with a pencil on both sides. Take it, flip it over and uh, line it all back up. Get it all lined up. You can see visually where the blade needs to be shaped in order to make it symmetrical. So right now, there's a little tiny area right there that's over the line, and there's a little area on the other side where there's it's a little under the line. So that means I need to grind a little bit out of this area right here. And then you just do that and then bring it back to the paper and draw around it again and keep doing that until it looks identical when you flip it over. I've got the layout done on the sword for the fuller. Profile's done, so it's pretty straight, pretty flat. The layout here is about a 23 inch long section where we're gonna grind this half inch wide fuller. And I have it tapering just a little bit, almost an eighth of an inch all the way down to here. And then when we grind the blade bevels in there, it'll make the fuller taper even more to be similar to what the uh, test piece is that I showed you guys. So I got the layout done on both sides here. The way I did the layout was uh, I wanted to be able to just set it on the flat granite and then take the scribe and scribe the lines on there. But the blade tapers a lot. So what I did was super glued some little shims on here to make the fuller rather taper the amount I wanted to when I laid it down on the flat granite surface and then scribe the line on there. So that's how I got the lines on. I put my file guide on here to get a start and stop mark for the fuller. It's gonna start here and end right here. And then something I did with the test piece, I had to figure out some stuff with my wheel. First, what I need to do is I need to take this over to the disc sander or whatever grinder and sand the tips of this aluminum off just a little bit because they kind of get in the way when I'm grinding the fuller, I noticed, with the test piece I did. And then something else I have here is this is a one inch wheel. I have some tape wrapped around it to make it a thicker diameter. Let me take that off and explain why I'm gonna put that tape back on there. 
So I'm gonna rough in the grind on the fuller with 36 grit belt and those belts are really, really thick. And with that thick belt on here, it makes this wheel diameter a tiny bit larger, just large enough to where these ball bearings don't get in the way. But when I put a finer grit belt on there, the belt is a little bit thinner diameter or thickness and that makes it so this bearing is just big enough to get in the way of grinding my fuller when I get up to the end of the fuller grind. So if I put those few layers of tape on there, it makes it so the wheel diameter diameter is a little larger and it matches better what the uh, diameter is when that thick coarse belt is on there and it also makes it so that the bearing will just barely clear as I do the fuller grinding. So I'm going to sand these tips off like I said and then start rough grinding this fuller in. It is going to be a scary terrifying process because uh, I've never met I've never ground on something this big before so probably going to get my arms quite the workout too because it'll get heavy real quick I think. To the grinder slash disc sander. <laughs> in and I've been hand sanding this thing and trying to get it uh, get it up to a 1500 grit finish. I want to get it hand sanded before I grind in the bevels because the sandpaper will smooth out the edges and kind of round them over a little bit and that would be a little bit of a problem if I had the bevels ground in there because it would be round on the edges and they wouldn't be as crisp as they would otherwise be. But if I go ahead and sand this before the bevels are ground in, the bevels will grind up to the fuller and those edges will be nice and crisp and brand new and then the fuller won't need sand anymore so it'll just be a way to keep those edges of the fuller extra crisp and sharp. So I got a couple little sanding things here that I made to do this with. This is just some kind of chunk of handle off of something and I rounded it to fit down in the fuller, put a couple layers of uh, duct tape on it so it would be kind of squishy and then I can just take a piece of sandpaper and fold it around it, stick it in there and go to town. And then I also, I use that in a combination with this round wheel that I actually ground the fuller with. And I have some tape on there to make it a little bit thicker so I want it the same diameter as it would be with uh, the sanding belt going around there. This paper is a lot thinner than the sanding belt, so there's extra tape on there to make it the same diameter. And then I use this quite a bit, mostly just on the ends, because that wood doesn't get up close to the end very well. A little bit of a pain to hold on to with ball bearings and stuff on there, but those are my sanding sticks, if you will. And I've been doing tons and tons of sanding on this and got a little bit more to go before the, the sanding is all done in the fuller. The next day. The fuller is finally sanded. I spent the better part of a day sanding on this thing. My fingers are killing me from holding on to that little sanding wheel that I made up, but I got the job done. Sanded it after the machine grind. I sanded it with 600 grit by hand, and then I did 1000 grit, and then it's at 1500 grit now. It'll be pretty much untouched until the uh, rest of the blade is done, and, and then when we go to etch, I'll just lightly sand over it again. I've also marked out the edge of the blade. I've got a mark right in the center of the blade that I can use as a reference all the way through, and then about 25 thousandths of an inch on the outside of sanding. I have a mark on each side of center that I can rough grind to. The way I did that was I just set my granite slab up right here and used my height gauge with a uh, carbide tip in it. Got it set to the right level, the right height, and then just scribe a line all the way across the edge. I've got a mark in the center and then a 50 thousandths wide mark as well that I can use as reference points. There's a couple little slight wobbles in the blade, so those marks kind of transferred over onto the edge, but hopefully I can get that all uh, taken care of with grinding and mostly use the marks as a reference, but also keep in mind that I need to uh, slightly adjust a couple things as I'm grinding this down. So yeah, this blade is now ready for the blade bevels to be ground in. It will finally be ready to start really seriously removing material weight, because right now it's almost five pounds, pretty heavy. The fuller removed a little bit of weight, but not a whole lot, and there's a lot of grinding here to do. Hopefully I can do it without too much trouble. I've never ground anything this long. The longest blade I've ever done was 18 inch blade. This thing is about 36 inches right now. Quite a bit longer. Hopefully it'll go well. To the grinder. I understand you're frustrated. So many unanswered questions. The video left you hanging. You simply need to subscribe so you can get notified of the most recent videos. Thank you for watching.